Hey guys, it's M4J here, and welcome back to the M4J Network here on OpenTTD and Google Sheets, because we're going to be working on something a little bit different today. Uh, I say that a lot, actually. I do say that a lot. So to be honest, it being different, it's probably it being the same, but there we go. Um, I'm also recording on a laptop this week using my old headset microphone. So if the audio quality has tanked, I apologize. Um, those of you watching on mobile who can suddenly see the screen, you're welcome and actually read everything that is on here. Right, uh, the game is up here right now. We're not really going to be looking at the game too much uh, in today's episode. You can see I am here live, I'm moving around. I'm actually going to focus the camera here on Little Praning Well. Right smack bang here on the Guard City Great Western route and also the Western Reaches South route. The reason we are here uh, is because we are working on a brand new timetabling system. Um, this is something, it kind of came out of nothing. Um, talking to people on Discord about timetables and stuff and getting people's opinions and things. Um, and actually, people have now started saying that my old scheduling system uh, on Google Sheets is not very good, which I kind of knew, but to actually have it said to me, um, yeah. You're not wrong. It's terrible. It's absolute garbage. Plus, we've now got people who are starting to look at real-life timetabling and scheduling and um, operations, railway operations, and it's become very, very obvious that not only is what I'm doing wrong, it's so wrong, it's almost right in a whole other way. So, it badly needed updating. I was looking to do that anyway, um, mainly because I want to know how long it takes to run from one destination to another on the network and that's for timetabling reasons and also to try and fix this scheduled dispatch issue that I've been having rather than just guessing when to release trains uh, on um, schedules and you know just picking a random number between 1 and 30 and making that be the scheduled dispatch release time um, I'm going to try and do it through a bit more of methodical thinking I think is the best way of saying it so I went away and I had a little think about things and I decided uh, with George's permission to use the Guard City Western Railway um, franchise as a test bed so it's a test bed for lots of different things it's a test bed for the franchise model that we set up uh, it's a test bed for data collation which is to do with passenger numbers where people are going from and to um, and it's now a test bed for a brand new timetabling system so Bear in mind uh, also because I'm recording on a laptop, you know, the footage might be a bit choppy. Hopefully the audio isn't choppy. I'm also recording to an external hard drive directly, so hopefully things work. So far so good. Touch wood. Can't find anything made of wood. Touch wood. It continues. Um, oh God, I think I just blew up my microphone there as well. So yeah, this here is what I came up with. Now I have no idea if you're actually seeing what I'm seeing right now. Let me just select, uh, actually here's a point. You're on 1WXX, so that's the one I'm going to focus on right now. So if I select a, a cell, okay, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. So I've currently uh, selected cell L35 which you can't actually see. That's not helpful at all, is it? And I actually don't know how to... Basically, I couldn't work out how to capture... Um, what am I trying to say? I couldn't work out how to capture Chrome in OBS. I know there is a way of doing it because my old laptop used to let me do it, but this one, I haven't worked it out yet. I think it's something to do with NVIDIA and letting um, OBS through the firewalls that NVIDIA has. So this may or may not work. This may become a bit of an audio description episode. It may become a shorter episode because of it. Um, but yeah, this is actually this episode. I should also be quite candid about this as well. This episode is a test for whether or not I can actually record Open TTD efficiently on this laptop. Because if the test goes well, then that means I will no longer miss episodes when I'm away from the office. So I've already said this in Football Manager, but I'll say it again here. Um, I live in Hertfordshire, my girlfriend lives in Kent, uh, not exactly neighbours. Um, so whenever I'm down there, I don't have access to my desktop, which is what 
I normally use for recording but I have this new laptop if it works then great it means I can record when I'm on the move and this external hard drive that I'm recording to means everything is now 100% portable and I'm not relying on things like Google Drive and my brother at home turning on my desktop for me. Uh, the downside to that is I had to copy my OBS profile over which means some things uh, actually with recording it shouldn't be an issue but with streaming some things might not be where they're supposed to be and just little things like that but it's no biggie it's not a huge issue um, it's mostly solvable um, but yeah one of the problems I've got is I can't capture Chrome efficiently so let me try if I come up here and select like L6 can you guys see that no if I was to put something in that box would you be able to see that yes okay so you can't see what I've selected but you can see if I type something in let me explain what we've got here anyway um, because this is mainly a descripting descriptive episode bit of an audio description now as well apologies for that um, and I will show you the second because I've got two sheets here uh, that I can show you I'll show you what the second one is in a second so first of all this is the Guard City Great Western schedule sheet right now it is a data collection sheet this will be replaced eventually by a brand new sheet based on this design so right here we've got on the left hand side from cell A4 uh, in fact just column A is depots so every time a train goes into a depot um, it will appear on the schedule in the f furthest left hand column um, then we've got in the B column we've got waypoints so any time that a train runs through a destination without stopping and that includes stations so on this example we have here uh, actually do we have a state yeah Gronville West there's a good one so in cell B B12 you can see Gronville West um, and I can't can I no I just can't highlight it I could do this maybe can you see that yes so this is Gronville West it's a station we all know it's a station trains stop there uh, in fact this service I believe actually no this service doesn't stop there never mind um, but this let me just get rid of that as well um, because it's used as a waypoint in this case, it's used as a wayfinder and I think it's also used for speed limiting purposes, uh, it counts as a waypoint and therefore it goes in the waypoint column. Column C is stations, so every time a train actually stops at a station uh, and that can be for a minute, it could be for an hour, doesn't matter, it counts and therefore it appears on here. So for example C18, Morningpool Falls. This by the way is the Guard City St. Peter to Morningpool Falls off-peak service. Right now I've only done the off-peak services just to get some uh, some data collection um, because the times should be the same for uh, peak services and also night services as well uh, unless there's additional stops of course in which case they will be added accordingly. But you can see here the train stops for 30 minutes at Morningpool Falls. It arrives at 8.19 and it leaves at 8.49 but not always. We'll come to that again in a second. So column D, as I've already explained, uh, pretty much there, is the departures, uh, sorry, the arrivals column. I, yeah, I knew I was going to mess this up. One second as well, because I've just noticed something that is bugging me. Let me fix that. There we go. Uh, so yeah, column D is arrivals. So this is every time a train arrives at a destination and it will be the destination that is in the same row. So for example, uh, Morningpool Falls, I've already said it, arrives at 8.19, leaves at 8.49. Column E is the departure time, pretty self-explanatory, same as the arrivals time. Column F is the wait time. So uh, for example, again, Morningpool Falls, let's use it, row 18. You can see morning pool falls on here, can't you? Yes, you can. So row 18, um, cell F18, you can see the number 30 there. That is in minutes. Um, all times are in hours on the left, then semicolon, then is semicolon, isn't it? Uh, and then, well, it's hours on the left, minutes on the right. Let's put it like that. I can't remember if I, it's, I should know. Oh, it's a colon, isn't it? It's just a colon, because I'm pretty sure a semicolon is the one with the comma underneath. Yeah, anyway, um, 
yeah, minutes are on the right. That's all you need to remember, and hours are on the left. So 30 minutes, it waits at Morning Pool Falls. Then column G, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So it's journey times from the previous waypoint, or the previous um, call it, uh, timing point. That's the word I was looking for, timing point. So G6, you'll see here, it says 0004. That is the time it takes to go from Runding Hall Train Depot, which is column uh, cell A5, to Nadham TMD West, which is A6. Uh, so it's always the the row that it's on. It's the journey time between the row above and the row it's on. So it's like an N minus one scenario. The only cell that doesn't apply to is G5. Because uh, this, when I created this schedule, it, it's subject to change how many rows there are. So I didn't want to put in a formula and then it not work correctly. Um, incidentally, I mean, I'm kind of pleased myself for being able to do this. Using Google Sheets here, I created formulas where sometimes it'll only show if there's a number in there that's above zero. Sometimes it will show if there is a number that is zero. So for wait times, only if it's more than zero will it actually show. And for journey times, even if it is zero, it will show because you need to know how long it takes to go from A to B, even if it's within the same minute. That is a flaw in the system, by the way. Um, and it's the flaw with OpenTTD and, and um, the scheduling system there that it only goes down to minutes. It doesn't include seconds, which can make it a little tricky when it comes to scheduling. But, uh, yeah, can't complain too much. Can't complain too much. Um, so, H5 is the total journey time for the entire schedule. And that is essentially the arrival time at the depot, which is uh, D5, minus the departure time, which is E5. It's pretty simple. And again, you can kind of see where there might be an issue with this timetabling system and again I'll come to that in a second because there are believe it or not quite a few problems with this system still um, then we got my favorite bit here so when I was creating this timetable originally I just had the arrival and the departure time and I had it listed as XX semicolon and then you know 47 55 whatever it might be and that works great until you realize that if you've got a schedule that takes 3 hours 38 minutes how are you meant to know when you cross from one hour to another? Uh, now you could just look and say, well, this one arrives at 55 and leaves at you know 15, therefore it must be in the next hour, which is great. But you can't really work out how long your um, schedule is through formulas when you've got X's in your hour column. So therefore I had to choose a specific run for each service to collect the journey times, which is also great until you realize that not every single journey time um, is then accounted for and you might have you know special um, peak hours services or uh, you're not exactly covering all services in the day so I wanted to get the first run of the day and you can see that uh, J and K2 um, is the first run and in this case it is 1W01 now these reporting numbers will also change in the future but for now I'm just using the ones that we had in the game for simplicity's sake so to get the first run I took the datum run which is the run that I collect the data from uh, and then subtract however many hours difference it is between the datum run and the first run now in this case there is no difference the one I chose is the first run of the day which is the uh, leaves the depot at 7.47 and it arrives back at 11.25 therefore I put 0 in the box there uh, and then it subtracts the numbers which in this case is 0 and that therefore becomes the first run of the day 1W01 then we've got frequency which is in L5 now the frequency is again pretty self-explanatory it's the, the uh, amount of trains uh, sorry it's the num it's the distance it is the headway, that's the word I was looking for, between trains. So in this case, it's two hours. Uh, this isn't a frequent service. Um, it's actually a good one to use as an example because it's not hourly or half hourly. It's uh, every other hour. I was about to say twice hourly, but that's not what I mean at all because that's half hourly. It's every other hour. So it's every two hours. So the next train after the 747 is the 947, and then the 1147, then the 1347, and then you can see columns 
uh, M to Z cover all the trains that run that day in that service. Some have more than this, some don't. It very much depends on, um, well, I mean, George is the, uh, the scheduler for this, so it very much depends on what he uh, decided on. Not every service that he has chosen is in the network yet, but this system will help with that. So this is the timetable set up now for this service. And again, like I said, there are some issues with this. First and foremost, this isn't a live schedule. This doesn't update. If a train runs late for whatever reason, this schedule remains the same. So therefore the train becomes late. Uh, if I decide to add an additional stop, so this service runs direct from Monningpool Falls to Woolworth, but let's say I add an additional stop at Gronville West, that's not included on here. And if I was to do that, that then means that um, not only would I have to add a new row in each direction for Gronville West, but I would also then have to change all of the times after that first stop at Gronville West just to make them all match up again which is not convenient, let's be honest, because these schedules will change quite a bit uh, with some of the plans that we've got. So, not the best way to run this. Um, another problem, which... Um, actually, one other thing before I talk about problems again. This is a full run that you're seeing here. You can't see all of it because it cuts off at the bottom, but it starts at the depot and it ends at the depot. So, it includes all the journey time when the train is running as empty coaching stock which technically at that point it wouldn't be running as 1W01 it would be running as I think 5W01 I think 5 is for empty coaching stock movements I believe I've got that right someone will correct me if I'm wrong someone always corrects me when I'm wrong um, so it is a complete run but like I said it's not live it doesn't auto update uh, and another problem is this doesn't actually help me plan out future services. This just tells me what this current service does, which is great. It's nice to have this, and I am using this, um, but I've only really created these for each individual service to find out how long it takes to travel from one place to another. So I know now, looking at this, that if the train leaves the depot at 7.47 and it arrives at Morningpool Falls at 8.19, it has taken 32 minutes to get from that is right isn't it 32 yeah 32 minutes to go from the depot to Monningpool Fault and that includes a 15 minute stopover at the in-game uh, you know M4J network depot which in this case is Nadam TMD West um, so this is helpful in many ways, but it's also incredibly unhelpful in many ways. What I would do to improve this, and you can see there's a, a extra tab at the bottom on the left hand side there called common timings. And that's what actually this whole sheet here was created for. Uh, I want to know how long it takes for an, H an HST to run from the depot to all of the starting points for schedules on this route. So I think Munfingford, uh, Monningpool Falls and Guard City are the three origin stations for HSTs. And I think right now GSP isn't actually used as an origin, but it might be in the future. So when that becomes a thing, then we'll add that in. Um, and I haven't come up with a design for the common timing sheet yet because I didn't know how it would look. I didn't know how this schedule would look either. This has evolved. I think I'm on iteration 10 right now which might sound like a lot but believe me it's changed a lot and George can attest uh, to that because I'm constantly messing with it while he's trying to fill in numbers for me and I apologize for that um, but I think this is still very very useful and these will become publicly available uh, not yet though because I haven't finished all of them and you know they're not they're not that useful still so yeah basically this this is good but it's also bad uh, it needs working. So eventually I will come up with a, a more um, auto-updating schedule where, you know, if I add an additional stop, this is something that Google Sheets might be able to help me with, but it might have to be something that's done in an external database of some kind where I don't necessarily have to export data from the game, but if I decide to add an additional stop to a service, I can do that and it will auto-update all the times below it. 
Um, one good way of, of doing that actually is to use what we've got here uh, as for what it was intended. It's a datum. So again, if it takes 32 minutes to run from the depot to Morningpool Falls, but we decide to add a stop in at Gronville West uh, for 15 minutes, or maybe that's too much. Oh, no, let's just say 15 minutes because it makes it easier to round. It no longer takes 32 minutes to run from the depot to Morningpool Falls. It now takes 47. And I need to have a system that will recognize that and automatically update all the times below this new row that's been added to match the new stop and start times. Um, which, again, is a problem with this system that we've got here. Uh, neither me nor George filled this in incorrectly, which is lucky because if we had we would be collecting incorrect data which would could end up affecting the schedules moving forward. As it happens, um, George's schedule was reading different arrival and departure times to mine uh, at some at various points, different services. And I my, my theory behind that is he uses ticks to measure time and I use minutes and I think there might be a rounding error or something because each one was off by three to four minutes and it was consistent enough that it looks like it might be something to do with when converting from ticks to minutes. It might not be 100% accurate and therefore it offsets it slightly. That's my theory, I could be wrong. Um, it just happened to be something I'd noticed. So I've updated my times to match the numbers that George has put in, so we should be in sync now. Um, but yeah, if one of us had, had inserted an incorrect time, so instead of saying uh, 8.19 to 8.49 at Morningpool Falls, if I accidentally typed in 8.59, suddenly that comes up saying a 40-minute wait, which obviously it's not. Therefore, all the times after that would either be 10 minutes later than they should be, or the journey time from Morningpool Falls to Morningpool Falls cross-country waypoint would be minus 9 minutes, which, as we all know, is impossible. So... This isn't a perfect system. It's not a perfect system. It's more based on real world operations than the previous system, but there's still a lot of work that can be done to make this better. But the reason I did this was, A, it looks pretty. It looks very nice. And I might actually go and recolor the header here to the actual hex code that's used for the GWR route just for no other reason than I think it would look good. But the reason I actually did this was for this. Um, now, again, you can't actually see very well what I'm trying to show you here because uh, it starts off at C and you don't want to see C. You want to see um, what I'm seeing. So actually, uh, actually, no, it's not going to work. I really wish I could add a window capture for Chrome. That would be so helpful right now. But I can't. Oh, let me move that down. So I don't want you to see everything that I'm seeing right now. Oh, hang on. Maybe I can. Ah. Hang on one second. Maybe I can do this. All right. Let me turn this one off too. Okay. Maybe you can see what I'm seeing. If I go fix the screen again. Uh, so it's not perfect. In fact, it appears to be, hang on, let me try and add another one. Uh, window capture, window, whoops, window capture. So there's OpenTTD again. Give me one second. There we go. Right, let me get rid of this one. You're seeing a lot of black screens that you don't really want to be seeing right now, but here we go. So, uh, hopefully there's nothing on my Chrome that you're not supposed to see. don't think there is. I might just um, crop this just in case. So actually, we're back to where we were before. Anyway, so this is the, the timetables again, and I can show you, if I skip across to like 2A, for example, uh, and then you know scroll up and down you can see there's quite a lot of different stops here it's actually it's not too bad filling these in I had a little cheat and I didn't tell George this and I feel bad for that 
but basically I would do the first half. So I would do Ruding Hall here down to where's halfway? GSP. And then I would copy and paste GSP to Nadam TMD West. And then I would add a new column on the left and put one, two, three all the way down. And then I would copy and paste that. Uh, sorry, I would have already copied and pasted. What am I talking about? I'd have added a new column, put the numbers one to whatever it was, and then just select all that and then do um, sort by column A, Z to A. And it just flipped it around for me. Couldn't do that with the time, sadly. I had to fill those in by hand. But it's a little time saving measure. Everything I do, I do things that take six hours to save five minutes. It's really weird. But I like automation. So we got like his G, his L, his P. Then we got 2B, XX, 2C, XX, 2J, XX, 2M, XX. And don't think the branch lines have been excluded. This is Plindum Junction to, is it Tainingbury, I think it is. Um, that's been included as well. Here we've got um, Marui City Central to Slen Town, I think it is. Um, and then back this way, we got Woolworth to Barnford Town. They're all in here. They are all in here. All off-peak services throughout the day are included in this um, spreadsheet. And eventually the night trains and things and the, even the one-off services will be included on here as well. Although moving forward, any new services will be made using this, but going into the common timing sheet, which as you can see has not been fully filled in yet. But yeah, this is what it was all in aid of. This right here. So this is the Garden City Great Western Route Station Occupancy Sheet which again I know it's really nerdy if you're not into this kind of thing you're probably wondering what the hell am I looking at but basically this is what it was all in aid of so I, need to, I needed to know at any point during the day how many platforms were occupied at each station and again, George very kindly allowed me to use GWR as a test bed, but this isn't Guard City Great and um, Guard City Western Railway. Sorry, this is the Guard City Great Western route. So this is the actual track itself, the infrastructure. Guard City St Peter down to Munfingford Paragon via Woolworth, Plindham Junction, Guard City Great Winfield Airport, things like that. Um, it will eventually include some of the other extremity stations, but it won't. This sheet won't include things like um, Charwood because Charwood is not uh, a GWR station. It's actually a Guard City Southwestern station that just happens to have GWR services operating to it. However, Charwood is the reason this sheet exists because I'm sick and tired of a four platform station being full and having like a 20 train queue waiting to use it because I didn't schedule the trains very well. Um, so it's all well and good having trains dispatched from their depots separately, but by the time they meet again at the other end of the line, they could be on each other's toes. And I didn't want that. So that's what this is for. So ignore this end, because this is something that's probably going to be revisited in the future, because right now I don't like the idea of HSTs running throughout the night. Um, so that will change. But over here is where things get interesting. So first of all, let's talk about the platform designations over on the left-hand side here. Can you see my cursor? I don't actually know if you can see my cursor. Um, can you see what I've got selected? Yes, you can. Right, so here, Guard City Great, Great Western. This is the main station itself. So if I go back to the game quickly... Uh, that's not gone well, has it? One second, because I think what I've done here... Yeah. Okay. Uh, one second, everybody. I have goofed. Let me just remove that one quickly. I'm going to add another window capture here. We'll call it window capture 2. That's fine. And we'll go with... Yep. Yeah, that's also fine. And then we'll make this full screen. And then I'm going to crop it again just so you can't see my bookmark tab. There's nothing bad there. It's just there's stuff that I think I'm not allowed to disclose right now. So keep an eye on that for a second. We're going to scooch back to this. 
and then I'm going to explain the platforms. So, top one up here, the northernmost platform, this is platform one. It's officially now designated as platform one and it is exclusively used by sleeper trains. I can now officially reveal the M4J network will have sleeper trains operating out of some of its mainline termini. Uh, particularly out of Guard City and Bar City. This one probably will actually run down to Bar City, but it will take quite a, a circular route. So it will start off here at GSP, and it will run down through Great Winfield Airport, through Plindham Junction, through Munfingford Paragon, and then it will take one of the three different routes to um, Drentbourne, and then from there to Bar City. That's the plan. It might take a couple more detours along the way, um, but that is the basic plan. So that's P1. P2 is then the one directly below it. P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, P9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That should collate with what I've got here. Yes, it does. Uh, then we've got the Guard City Overground. He says trying to find the thing again. So um, now we're running with clockwise and anti-clockwise. So anti-clockwise is this one here. Uh, you can see my mouse, can't you? my cursor. It's because I've got the... Yeah, I think you can. So this is the anti-clockwise one. It's the one that runs south. Basically, the southbound track is the anti-clockwise and the northbound track is clockwise. Same with the um, underground, which is over here. Clockwise is the leftmost track, the northbound one, and anti-clockwise is the southbound one. Simple as that. And I believe, if I scooch back to this... Those are all the platforms at GSP. So we've got anti-clockwise here, clockwise, clockwise and anti-clockwise. I think I've done that. Actually, why did I do? Okay, yeah. So yeah, P15 is the anti-clockwise, P16 is the clockwise, and then 1780. Yeah, that does make sense. Um, so it says here, uh, you know, fast, fast and slow, slow. So the platform numbers themselves are mainly just designations. So we can officially say this is platform one, this is platform two. Now you can see I've got um, right now one AXX will always call it platform two. That might not necessarily be the case. So ignore the platform numbers here now and just focus on the left hand column where it says fast. We have platforms that are exclusively used by fast trains. We have platforms that are exclusively used by slow trains. And then we've got the three in the middle, and I can never remember which three they are, uh, that are used by fast and slow. And I tried to make it so that the HSTs are allocated to the fast, the commuter trains will be allocated to the slow, and then you can see I've got um, 2L and 2P that operate out of the fast and slow because I think they arrive in um, are on the fast lines through the fast waypoints and then they go into I do actually think they use the fast platforms but they can use the fast or the slow so it doesn't really matter so I just put them in the middle ones um, again this isn't a perfect system it's mainly just a, an indicator as to how many platforms of each type are being occupied uh, it actually works better when you look at the anti-clockwise and the clockwise for the overground and the underground. That's when it starts to make a little more sense. It doesn't work great for, for terminus stations, this system, or stations where multiple platforms can be accessed by a single line, because then you start to get uh, confusions like this. But this is just one station. This is Guard City St. Peter. The what, what I want to do to end this video very quickly is show you how this works. So this is Little Praningwell, which again, if I go back to the game quickly, is where we started uh, off the episode over here. And you can see we've got multiple platforms on multiple tracks. As it happens, this station isn't just on the main line um, used by GWR trains. It also has Western Reach's South trains. And that, again, if I go back to this, that is reflected in the sheet here. So this is the Guard City Great Western route station occupancy, but it does also include the Western Reaches South. And when it comes to using uh, the Western Reaches South sheets, this will basically be copied and pasted, and it might they might even be linked together. So if one changes, the other changes too. Um, again, 
I'm hoping there's a way of actually doing that. Might have to involve some scripting. If anyone knows how to do that, by the way, please do let me know. Um, I know how to do reference cells uh, from one tab to another in a sheet, but this won't be the f on the same sheet. This will be different sheets. So, yeah, if anyone knows how to do that, that would be very great. Thank you very much. So, again, um, P1 in this case. Ah, we're also introducing some new terms to the series now. So, we've got the up slow and the down slow. We've also got the up fast and the down fast, and then we've just got up and down. So, for those of you who don't know, up generally means, in the UK at least, towards London. You go up to London, you come down from London. Um, not always the case. If you're in and around Glasgow, for example, or Edinburgh, or Manchester, or any major city really, and you're using their local commuter services, up will be towards that city. So up will be towards Manchester, say, or towards Glasgow. But generally in the UK, if you're going to London, uh, your, your train is going to London, you will be on the up, uh, slow or fast, depending on how fast you're traveling. So platforms one, two, and three here at Little Praningwell are on the up slow uh, for the Western Reaches South. Four, five, six are on the down slow. So even though they are technically terminus platforms, some of them, like um, I think two, three, four, and no, yeah, two, three, four, and five are, and actually even six are terminus platforms. I think one is the only one that isn't. Um, they are still counted as being down far, uh, down slow and, and up slow. Then we've got the, the GWR platform. So P7 is the up fast. P8 is the down fast. So uh, I won't go back to the game now. But if you are remembering the previous um, screen. They're the two that sit between the slow. The two sets of slow lines basically. And they are used by HSTs. So it was important to include them. Then we've got two up slow on the GWR, two down slow, they are P9 and 10 on the up slow and 11 and 12 on the down slow and then Guard City Overground which are the two southernmost platforms we've got an up and a down. Um, didn't have to do up and down on, G on um, Guard City Overground but I did anyway just because. So I'm going to show you how I've used the timetable sheet to work out platform occupancy. And this is new territory for me because it's the first time I've done this in a non-terminus station. So let's start off with the uh, the service that I showed you right at the top of the video, which is 1WXX. And the reason I chose 1WXX to start with is because I know for a fact it is the only fast service that stops at Little Praningwell. Although I'm looking right now, 1WXX, I seem to have made... A mistake after all I just said about not making a mistake when putting the numbers in unless I made a mistake when I originally did the timetable that's also very plausible which is what I'm checking now 1WXX grab you quickly and let's see so little praning well um, where are you you are there nope it is actually correct. I set it for three minutes as a stopping time. I'm not sure if I like that actually, but I can't change that without then changing everything else. So I guess for now at least, until we have a better system, it's locked in. Uh, so again, let me just check that OBS is indeed working. So right now I can say that the first run of the day is 9.15 to 9.18 and that block at that point at Little Praningwell uh, is taken up. Let's go with uh, actually where which direction are we traveling and that's another question I think we're heading towards yeah we're heading towards Guard City so the up fast at 9.15 is occupied so let's head across to 9.15 I will also explain how this works in a second there's 9.15 and 1 WXX there we are so we'll paint you um, green we'll put the I actually had a custom yeah there it is custom border color as well thank you George for supplying me with that uh, I also need to make you the right there we go 1WXX and then every two hours after that uh, it will also be occupied so 
Uh, so, okay, yeah, sorry. Quickly explain this as well. So the time in the box here, 9.15, uh, first of all, it's in every five minutes. It's five minute increments on here. So even though the train arrives at 9.15 and leaves at 9.18, we assume that between 9.15 and 9.20, this platform is occupied. I couldn't do it for every minute because you think how many minutes there are in a day, it's 60 times 24. It's just, I mean, my mental math's letting me down here. Let's just quickly work out what. 16 times 24 is 384 minutes in a day, which means we'd need 384 cells, which is just ridiculous. So it's done in five minute increments, and it's also the line on the left hand side, so in this case, the line between uh, DI and DJ, that is the, the line that indicates the time. So midnight here is this line here between C and B um, and then so here the train arrives at 915 leaves at 920 therefore or technically leaves at 918 that means we only need to fill one cell and then we can do that every two hours so 1115 will be the next one which is all the way over here uh, and then if I go back to the timetable quickly I can now see that the last run of the day it arrives at 11.15 p.m. and leaves at 11.18 p.m. So now I can use um, a little shortcut here. If I go across now to 13.15, which is here, and then paste. Oh, that's not gone to plan at all. Never mind. One second. I'll do it properly this time. So there you go, 115 and then over further to 315 and then over further to 515, then 915 and then uh, somewhere along, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? This is 515, that's 715, then we've got 915 and then we've got 1115. And that's the last run of the day in that direction. But this train calls in both directions. So we're going to swoop down here. And between 9.53 and 9.56, now this is where it gets interesting as well. Because we have to now say that this train arrives at 9.50 and it doesn't leave until 9, uh, actually until 10. So it carries over uh, 10 minutes instead of 5. So this is where we start to, to lose a little accuracy in what we're doing. So what was it 9.50 to 10? And that is now that block. So 11.50 to 12. And then 1.50 to uh, 2. And then 350. And again, if I go back to the trusty timetable here, so the last run here actually ends at midnight. So we will have to. Uh, actually, no, I don't think we will have to. I think we'll be fine. Um, so yeah, over here we've got 550, and then 750, and then um, 950, and then right at the end here. 11.50. So yeah, it fits. And you can already see now how this is starting to look a little not confusing as such, but it doesn't really make sense. But it's the way we're going to have to do it for now. Again, there might be a better way of doing this off of Google Sheets. There might be a database or some kind of software that will allow me to to make it, you know, like um, if you're editing a video, for example, you can zoom in and out and see the timeline at different uh length so whether it's in minutes whether it's in hours whether it's in seconds whether it's in milliseconds that kind of thing um, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this than what we're doing right now right so that's one W um, XX now we're gonna have a look at two a XX which in this case arrives at 652 and leaves at 654 now all of these are minute stopping times on the, um, the slow lines uh, 
Wait, no, that's not right. They are normally one minute. This one is two minutes because it's a major station. That's why that confused me then. I was like, four minus two is two, not one. Yeah, uh, I'm recording this quite late at night as well, so bear with me. So yeah, 6.50 to 6.55 a.m. is 2AXX. So 6.50... Uh, oh, what platform do you call that, actually? That's a good question. Um, what service did I say it was? 2A. XX. So you arrive on. Do do do. Again, it's why it's good to have this set up. You arrive on the slow lines by the looks of things because you come from East Town. Yeah, which right now only has platforms on the slow lines. Although that might change too. But more on that in a future episode. So let's just assume right now. Up slow at uh, actually I've got this wrong so it's 627 so 625 to 630 is the first train of the day uh, that arrives here at Little Priningwell and it's on the up slow so I'm going to put it in P9 but it could easily be P10 as well uh, and yeah 625 to 630 I'm just going to keep saying that out loud to make sure I don't mess up. So 6.25, here we are, to 6.30, you're going to be 2AXX, and we're going to paint you yellow. If you're wondering why I'm putting this border around it as well, it's just in case we do actually have other trains. Um, so right now there's 2AXX, there's only one 2AXX that operates on this route. But say in future we added a cross network service or you know a west coast train service that is also to AXX, we could tell just by looking at the coloured border as well as the um, the colour whether or not it's a semi fast or a stopping train and then also which franchise it operates on. So this I believe is an hourly service. Uh, let me just get OBS up again. There we go to make sure it's still working. Yes, it's hourly. So six twenty five and then seven twenty five right the way across to 10.25 so we can do this now every hour so 7.25 uh, 8.25 9.25 10.25 I'm not going to do this for every service tonight by the way I will do most of these off camera now after this um, as I said, I'm away next week, but I will have my laptop with me. And one of the plans, which is what I did last time I was away, was I took my laptop with me and I created these timetables, which is kind of a good way to spend a holiday, I suppose. But there are other things that I would rather be doing, but someone's got to do this and I wouldn't wouldn't want to outsource this to anyone else. It's my own problem. I did make this network after all. Uh, so there's seven. There's eight. There's nine. Uh, there's 10 and then was it 10 it stopped at actually uh, yes so that's the last train of the day in that direction and then we got to do the other direction which is 6.50 to 6.55 and we're going to drop down 2 to P11 so I said 6.50 to 6.55, which is here. Nope, here. Have I done this right, actually? 6.25 to 6.30. Wait, where's... Oh, there. Uh, Yeah, no, I did do that right. I just explained my own system and then almost didn't do it properly. But yeah, no, I have done it right. So yeah, 6.50 to 6.55, and then 7.50 to 7.55, and then 8.50 to 8.55, uh, 9.50 to 9.55, and then 10.50 to 10.55. One good thing about this system being in 5 minute increments is it does force you to create a headway between trains. So right now to use this system unless we started using um, you know 2AXX slash 2BXX because both will use it within that five minute period um, you will have to have trains running five minutes apart which might not necessarily be a bad thing 
until the line gets really densely packed and then we might start looking at maybe cutting a corner or two here or there but right now not an issue that I need to worry about particularly um, but yeah you, you get the idea now as to how this works if anyone has any suggestions for how to make this better whether you're someone like me who doesn't have much experience with railway operations or whether you're someone who's a seasoned pro when it comes to railway operations please please do get in touch regardless of which bracket you fall into because right now I want to find ways to make this quicker um, so it's all well and good having three hours in a day and being able to go through and, and do these but I don't always have three hours in a day uh, this week especially I've been very very busy because I've been pre-recording a lot of content for, for different reasons so excuse me got hiccups now as well um, so if you have a, a quicker way of doing this whether it's different software whether it's different method methodology please do get in touch and let me know that will be very very much appreciated as for now though I'm pretty much going to wrap up this video here because I've actually gone on for nearly an hour which I didn't think I would do uh, I thought 30 to 40 minutes would be what I did but yeah I'm going to go in and fill in the rest of this sheet then for little priming well I'm also going to go and do the same thing for um, all the other major stations along the route so we're not going to do it for every station right now we will in the future but right now I just want to do the main station so obviously Plinston's quite an important one because we will have trains freight trains running out here as well which is another thing I wanted to mention that is a potential issue here is right now we're only counting trains that actually stop so little praning well here um, we're only counting fast trains that stop in the fast platforms if there's an, an HST uh, it is an HST by the way that's the grammatically correct way of saying something uh, an when uh, the next word begins with an H I think it sounds stupid but it is the quite correct way of saying it so it's what I will be saying before anyone corrects me in the comments um, if an HST stops here in the fast platform and then there's an another HST running as an empty coaching stock movement behind it towards GSP um, it will get held up or if there's a fast train that's just running through to GSP and isn't stopping a little priming well it will get held up so again we can kind of get around that by using this platform occupancy to know that there will be a train occupying that platform within that five minute window and therefore hold the fast train uh, maybe for a minute longer at its previous stop just so that by the time it reaches Little Priming Well the, the platform will actually be free and it can run straight through. Um, same with the slow lines and freight trains we will know roughly when, in fact we will know exactly when these platforms are occupied so we will know roughly when to have a freight train arrive so that it can run straight through without being held up. Uh, again as I said it's not a perfect system but it's okay for now I'm hoping that the, the spreadsheets here I have built can be adaptable to match like uh, if we decide to add um, freight trains to the this system in the future we should be able to do that without having to start again from scratch that's the plan but again experts out there please let me know if that is in fact the case as I was saying though guys thank you very much for watching don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and of course if you're enjoying the series so far drop those comments down below it really is appreciated and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel be sure to hit the subscribe button if you have already subscribed to the channel thank you guys for your continued support hopefully this recording came out okay hopefully my voice isn't too muffled or, or broken through the audio um, because my microphone I keep playing with my headset as well as so you probably hear that apologies if you have heard that throughout the video um, but hopefully it's all gone well and this test has been a success and therefore I can start uh, continuing to produce content even when I'm out of the office but we'll see about that but yeah for now guys thank you once again and until next time I will see you soon